Well, welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast, the only podcast for dance studio owners, where each week we bring you business growth strategies to help you increase your profits, impact the lives of more students, while ensuring you get back some time to have a little life outside of the studio. It's time for you to become the go-to studio in your area. Now, here's your host, founder of the Dance Studio Owners Association, Clint Salter. Hi there, dance studio owners. Welcome to the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. It's Clint here. I'm really excited that you're joining us for today's episode. Now, today's guest is the amazing Tracy Harris. Tracy is the founder of Mums with Hustle and is an expert when it comes to all things Instagram. Tracy's website and online community provides mums in business with tools, resources, and support to grow and scale their business while raising a family. Today, she's joining me to share her hottest Instagram insights for studio owners. Whether you're a mum in business or not, one thing you will be is an expert in your studio's new and improved Instagram strategy. I know you guys are excited because you're always asking, Clean, how do I do Instagram? What should I be doing? And so we have the lady that's going to tell you all about it. Tracy, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Clint. Thank you for that really cool and energetic welcome because I'm really thrilled to be here, um, you know, chatting with your audience. I am actually a podcaster myself. I podcast weekly over at Mums with Hustle um, as a way of, I guess, teaching and supporting my audience of biz mums to absolutely thrive in their online business exposure. Um, But I also have a blog um, which we teach through. It's either myself getting on the blog and sharing some epic business building content um, or I have guest bloggers that are entrepreneurs and experts in their field that contribute to our blog as guest writers as well. But I also have a thriving Facebook community which is for specifically for mums in business. That is just an absolute I don't know. It is just a gem um, in terms of support and value and a place to come and ask all those business curly questions and overcome mindset battles um, that, you know, all business owners really face at one point or another. Um, But then, of course, my superpower is Instagram and I absolutely love it. I could talk about it all day. So, again, I'm pumped to be here and I'm just about to launch into... um, you know, enrolling, opening the doors for enrollment to my Instagram course, hashtag hustle. So that is a little bit about me and what I do at Mums with Hustle. I guess it's a place of community and it's a place of learning and thriving. And it's just, yeah, it's awesome. I absolutely love what I do. I love it. I love it. And thanks so much for for sharing with us a little bit about uh, you and your business before we get started. Now, Tracy, Instagram is one of those platforms that is uh, taking off and has been for the last couple of years. And one of the questions I get from my studio owners is, Clint, like, do I, do I have to be on Instagram? Like, why do I have to be on Instagram? I feel like I've got this Facebook thing going now, but what are the, what are the benefits of our studio owners jumping onto Instagram? Okay. Well, I mean, Instagram just announced last week, in fact, that they now have 700 million monthly users, um, which yes, it is just growing exponentially straight off the bat. Instagram has 10 times the amount of, you know, per follower engagement than Facebook does. So Mm -hmm. just that fact alone, like everyone knows um, Facebook is amazing. I definitely think, you know, everyone is on Facebook. It makes sense that your business is there as well. But if you're looking at adding on um, a secondary marketing platform, to me, it's actually my primary marketing platform. I would recommend Instagram, particularly if you are in um, a creative space because that Instagram is just, it is being lapped up by creatives and it makes sense to your audience, their clan um, of, you know, dance studio owners that they have a real active presence there as well because I can bet your bottom dollar that their target market is there and Mm. they're also willing to engage. So yeah. that is why, I, yeah, they're just way more likely to engage. And, you know, there was a statistic that was released like a week ago as well that 70% of Instagram users have actually purchased online before. So, like, that just tells you about their savviness 
um, their online habits. They're just more likely to go to their phone, Google something, call, um, you know, whether it's make an appointment or schedule something in for themselves on their phones. So if that's your target demographic and they're in that, you know, um, 15 to kind of 55-ish age group, which is like the majority of people, exactly. um, then you kind of yeah. need to be on Instagram. Yeah, because the thing with our studio owners is that their students, you know, like they're, they're what we call the senior students on Instagram, but we're finding that more of the parents are jumping on Instagram now as well. When it comes to, you know, starting our Instagram account, you know, is there is there strategy behind it? Should we be posting different things every day? Like talk to me about someone that a studio owner that's not on Instagram They know they've got to get started. What are some of the first steps that they should take to be able to, you know, build build a a platform there? Okay. Well, I think in its most simplistic form, I like to explain Instagram as a bit of a curated magazine that you would maybe... Um, set up a monthly subscription to for yourself. So Instagram users like to, I guess, subscribe or follow, um, as it's called on Instagram, follow niche accounts. So it's like, you know, if I'm interested in cooking, I subscribe to Donna Hayes magazine. And, you know, I'm delighted every month when a new magazine comes out and I am, my needs are fulfilled because she's got some beautiful photography and she's got some killer desserts that aren't really, you know, light on the hips, but they're great on the lips. And that's Donna Hay and I love it. Um, So Instagram is a little bit like that, Um, similar to, you know, if you love Home and Garden, then you might subscribe to Better Homes and and Gardens magazine and that arrives monthly and it's got all of this curated content that fulfills your interests, your passion and your needs and they never deviate away from that. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the most successful Instagram accounts are like that as well. So they know their audience. They're kind of marketing to one really specific individual. They know their interests, their pains, their pleasures, um, and they kind of, yeah, they have this real niche content and they just, they don't mix and match their content at all. Like they become the go-to place for X, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's interiors or whether it's dance or whether it's baby food recipes or whether it's really cool looking um, shots of coffee and that's all that is on that that person's Instagram account or whether it's, you know, um, yoga poses or funny memes that, you know, I guess a, a, an audience of mums really likes. Like if you can, the more niche you can become in your Instagram content, the more strong your brand is going to be and the more likely someone is going to decide to stay and give you a follow if they know what content they're going to get. So it's know your audience, try to have that really curated content and then just make sure that you have a really tight bio, which is that description at the top of your Instagram account um, that really tells people what you are, what you do, and what they can expect to get out of following you. Because when someone does find you on Instagram, whether they find you through a hashtag or they find you because, um, I don't know, someone else mentioned you and they clicked and then they've landed on up on your page... When they get to your account, the first thing that they're doing, and I kind of do this instantaneously, is they look at your bio, they they have a quick scan of what it says, and then they actually cross-check it with like the first six posts that they can see. Mm -hmm. Um, A new person to your account isn't really going to waste time scrolling back. They just do this almost in like two to three seconds, have a quick scan of your bio, see what you're about, and then they have a quick look at the first six posts, which is generally all that really fits on your phone screen. It's the bio and the first, the most recent six posts. And then they make a real quick snap decision if they're going to go or if they're going to stay. Um, so you've got to make sure that, yeah, that bio is really sus- succinct and speaks to that target follower. And it also marries up beautifully with those most recent six posts. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. This is, this is really great. And so that's kind of, that's kind of the foundation. And then as we get, as we get started, are, are there any uh, formulas around, okay, well, we should be posting, you know, I've heard 10 times a day, five times a day, once a day, 
certain times. Is is that important or is it the, the quality and like you just talked about, you know, knowing our, our customer that, that's most important? Um, okay, so obviously knowing your customer is most important. My rule of thumb is never just post for the sake of posting. Mm-hmm. It is better to have a great post that serves the needs of your audience, whether it's an emotional need like getting them to laugh or getting them to cry or, um, you know, uh, whether it appeals to, I don't know, their sense of wonder and intrigue or maybe you're teaching, you're giving some tips. Um, through video or through, I don't know, through some really great meaningful captions or whatever. Um, Yeah, so you need to have always be giving value. Um, Instagram and I think marketing in general now is really just about it's more pull marketing rather than push marketing. So the more you can give to your audience in terms of value and information or fulfilling a need or a passion um, as opposed to asking for the sale or asking people to call us now to arrange for this or click the link in my bio and I'll send you that. Um, Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, our target audiences are more savvy to that now. They want to just go to a place for enjoyment and that kind of builds up your following more so than just asking people to buy now or, you know, purchase this or sign up to that. Um, mm-hmm. So, yes, definitely, yeah, I would be following that approach when it comes to getting people to be a follower or engage with your content. It's about a relationship more mm-hmm. so if you're trying to grow your following. Know your audience and focus on a relationship and being an authority in your space and then that's how you kind of build up traction. Yeah, awesome. I love it. And so, you know, what is the what is the right kind of mix of, you know, providing value versus saying to someone, you know, come in for come in for a trial class, yeah. you know, come and dance with us. Um definitely the you know, a, a good thing that I like to tell our students is three gives and one ask. So mm-hmm. maybe if you if you look at that in terms of posts, if you had, if you're posting once a day, for instance, which is ample because, again, you only post if you've got value to post. Yeah. And a lot of businesses find it really hard to come up with more than one really valuable post a day. Um yeah, so let's say that you did three kind of gives, like you educated in one post or you, I don't know, you celebrated something in another post. Um, yeah, three kind of gives with great value and then you, or maybe you built community or laughter or whatever in your third post. And then the fourth post is where you can say, um, did you know that we offer this? Or click the link in my bio and come check us out, something like that. Um, so, yeah. Three gives, one ask. Always lead with value first. Um, yeah. you know, there, there are some businesses, Clint, that are more comfortable with posting more often or they've got lots of content to share and that is fantastic. So they can be posting two to three times a day. It really depends on what your goal is and if it is your main marketing channel because, as I said, it can be hard coming up with really great creative content that inspires um, three times a day. But if you can post up to three times a day, I would be doing it. I would just spread it out. It's a bit of an Instagram crime to be posting back to back, like, you know, three times in four hours or whatever is really not great Instagram etiquette. It's good to po- to spread it out. Uh, but the good thing about the Instagram algorithm is even if you post once a day, if you have an engaged following and they're interacting with your post regularly, then the next time they come on to Instagram, the next time they go on to their news feed, you're actually still going to be there, even if you posted 22 hours ago. Um, if they haven't actually gone on to Instagram since the last time you posted, then you are still going to be popping up um, in their news feed. So mm-hmm. Instagram is no longer chronological. It was. Um, prior to 2016, so people only really saw your posts as you did them. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to stress out about posting at the, a particular time as much anymore. Obviously, if you post at peak time for your audience when they are online um, on Instagram, then you're going to generate some quicker engagement on your post, but people are still going to see your post well and fully after the fact if they're regular engages with your content, even if 
um, it was a, a post that you did 22 hours ago. Yeah. Awesome. Now I want to kind of shift gears a second and talk about the difference between uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and does the content, should the content differ? Because one of the questions we get a lot from studio owners is, oh, I've just, you know, I post on Instagram and it just goes straight to my Facebook or, or vice versa. Is that what we should be doing or we should really be thinking about the two platforms differently? Oh, it's a bit of both if I'm honest. I don't advise that anyone shares. I know it's really convenient and, again, as business owners, we're often time poor and we feel like we'd rather be on both social platforms than just be on one. Um, So we kind of do it because we think it's going to save time. But it actually lowers your reach on Facebook even more if you share straight out of Instagram. Mm. So that, uh, yeah. I don't really advise that. What I do is I literally just copy paste my Instagram text um, and then I will just take the extra two minutes, open up the Facebook app, head over to my page, put um, put in the same image from my camera roll like I'm going to go do a post, um, paste in the text and I will modify the text a little bit so it's more facebook friendly in terms of language because Mm -hmm. the Instagram language is very different to the Facebook language. Um, On Instagram, it will say things like click the link in my bio or we use hashtags, which is not really a Facebook thing. Um, uh, What else? Um, Yeah, double tap if you agree. We use just, we use different language on Instagram to Facebook. So it's good to change the language a little bit um, just by doing a very quick edit and make it seem like it is special for your Facebook followers because you don't want them to feel like you've just dumped your Instagram post in Facebook and you're not giving them the same amount of love, if that makes sense. Yeah, Yeah, it sure it sure does. Now you just touched on hashtags, and I want to ask you about them because we're seeing you know posts on Instagram with with a whole bunch of hashtags. What what do they mean, and and how do they help us when it comes to reaching our ideal audience? All right. Well, hashtags are just essentially they are a search filter. So it's like keywords and key phrases and sometimes they can be a little bit obscure because, you know, hashtags really have whole communities um, and campaigns that kind of live and thrive under them as well. But it can be as simple as searching for kids' birthday party. So no no spaces and I can guarantee you a whole lot of kids' birthday party photos are going to come up, a whole lot of kind of inspiration pics for you to save and, you know, be inspired by will come up when it comes to that. Likewise, if you were to type in um, green smoothies, like you're going to get heaps that come up or mm-hmm. if you searched, you know, ballerina or whatever, like all of that related content is going to come up under that hashtag. So. For a beginner, I would just, I think the best way to explain it is that hashtags are search filters. So you can literally search hashtags to find content underneath and to also connect with your target audience. Um, If you search some hashtags that, you know, they are posting under, then you will be able to have access to your target audience's post. And then, of course, you can get in there and start engaging with them. And by leaving meaningful comments on their posts or by liking several of their posts, you kind of get on their radar and they learn to know that you exist. Now, hashtags are also great for you to use on your posts, provided that you're using some hashtags that you know your audience is searching. So that when they're going on their hashtag searches, there you are popping up with, you know, some amazing striking photography or posts that kind of make them stop it in their tracks and, and read and then want to connect with you. So that's essentially what hashtags are. They are search filters and using them really, really well, it can absolutely connect you to your target audience and let them know that you exist. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. On the, Can I ask you another question about hashtags, which, uh, which I've heard from a couple of people is that we should be using like 10 to 15 uh, of the kind of the same hashtags every time we post something and then add, you know, a couple of really relevant ones to that specific post. And I know like people have like a note section in their phone where they keep all their hashtags. Is that something that, that you subscribe to that you um, teach share with your students? 
Um, look, I like to teach a very, I don't know, I, I actually teach a whole hashtag kind of strategy or helping people to come up with their own hashtag strategy. Mm-hmm. You can use up to 30 hashtags. Um, one single hashtag is going to boost your engagement or your likes by up to, you know, 12.6%. So they are were they are definitely worth doing um so let's pretend that that someone is using all 30 hashtags um then it does definitely make sense to use about oh 15 or so industry hashtags mix some other ones up with you know a broader broader hashtags things that your audience are maybe searching but aren't so direct to your post and then maybe another five hashtags that um, you know, are just a little bit for fun or some hashtags that are really, really popular that can just drive some engagement to your post. But, you know, hashtags move really quickly. Some hashtags have a lot of posts underneath them and that means that your visibility in that hashtag may not actually be that good because the hashtag moves so fast and posts appear chronologically in hashtags. Um, mm-hmm. So, it can actually be a really good strategy to find some smaller, less popular hashtags and then actually use those mm, um, because it. then your post, yeah, then your post, you know, provided people are still searching it, your post is then visible for a bit longer. Yeah, awesome. I love it. That's a that's a great tip. Now, what about Instagram competitions? We're seeing this a lot now with our with our studio owners because their students are on there and they're they're posting pictures from from competitions and behind the scenes at recitals. What what is the deal with with Instagram competitions? How can we how can we make the most of them? Are they effective? Oh, they are definitely effective, provided you know. Um, you know, what it is that your audience is interested in and then you know how to get even wider reach again with the hashtags. Um, but I, in, in terms of the rules that you need to follow about a giveaway, um, mm-hmm. there can be some legalities around that. So I can send you over a link, Clint, to a really great blog post that is over at mumswithhustle.com about giveaways and it talks about Facebook give- giveaways as well just so that when you're going into doing such giveaways, you do stay on the right side of the of the law. Um, but tag giveaways are really popular on Instagram um, because they actually drive a lot of engagement underneath the post. So when I talk about a tag giveaway, and I mean, um, you know, the re- entry requirement might just be that you need to follow Mums with Hustle and tag a friend in the comments and, you know, multiple, feel free to tag multiple friends. Each tag counts as an entry. Um, So that way people are being sent over to your page. Like people are spreading the word for you. So a tag giveaway is really effective. Otherwise, it can be very beneficial to actually team up with a small pool of other businesses and come together with a larger prize pool and do something which is called a loop giveaway. Um, And that's where you can actually leverage and benefit from the collective following size of all of the businesses involved. Mm. So it just, and so someone might give away um, one one thing, another business might give away something else, another business might give away something else. And then, you know, there's this great prize pool um, and essentially you all have the same target audience but you all have the same target audience for different reasons. So you're not necessarily in direct competition with each other. Rather, it's, a, it's complementary and it fulfills by you working together with these other businesses is actually gives more value to your audience. Mm, perfect. I and love then, it. Yeah. And then everyone's posting about it. All of the businesses are in, involved are posting about it, which is just wider marketing for you yeah. rather than you just posting a giveaway solo on your account <laughs> and only the followers that see your post know about it. And then it, you know, it, it could just be so much more successful if you teamed up with an influencer, for example, in your space. Um, or if you teamed up with just even two or three other businesses that complement your your business and, and your prize, then it can just go so much further. 
Yeah, it's all, it's it's awesome. Um, look, I know that we're running running out of time, Tracy, but I, I do want to ask you quickly about uh, Instagram stories. Uh, should we be using this? Why is it why is it important? And what, where else do you think Instagram is going to take us over the next twelve months? Oh, well, first of all, I just love Instagram stories because I'm finding that, uh, you know, basically for people that aren't too familiar with Instagram stories, it's got its own kind of feed on Instagram, which runs horizontally at the top of your Instagram app. Whereas the other um, Instagram feed, your traditional um, Instagram feed is running vertically and which I said earlier is not appearing posts aren't coming up chronological anymore for the most part as what we figure um, is that Instagram stories is chronological and about only one third of Instagram users are really you know interacting on stories so by using it you actually have the chance of I can kind of dominating um, in your followers' feeds. Like if you're using it and you're using it often, you'll always bump kind of to the to the top in that feed. So definitely for exposure, I'd be using Instagram stories. And the great thing about it, Clint, is that there's just so much less pressure with Instagram stories because only you can see how many views you have had. Um, mm. A lot of, you know, people put so much weight and validation on, you know, how many likes they're getting on their post and how many comments they're getting because there can be this social pressure to kind of, um, you know, that you're judged on how many followers you have and, and likes and all of that. But with Instagram stories, people can't see how many views you've had. Um, so there's in, instantly, I, I feel like there's less pressure there for people to feel like they're successful in the eyes of others. It's also great because you get to show behind the scenes, you get to actually engage with your audience face to face or showing them around, you know, your dance studio. Um, you can do shout outs on Instagram stories now as well. You can actually type in, you know, the at symbol and and at mention another Instagram account. And then when people touch on that, it takes them straight to the other Instagram um, business owner's account. So that's really great for collaborating and shouting out other businesses or other, you know, students or people or influencers that you want to draw attention to. Um, Instagram stories are also, you know, they're going to increase in their functionality. Like we can see really, really big influencers and account holders, um, I know Gary Vaynerchuk, a really amazing entrepreneur, he's got like amazing features going on his Instagram stories where if you swipe up, it'll take you straight to his blog post. Like we don't have those features yet. They're rolling them out with really big players on Instagram. Um, so that's something to, to watch out for in the future as well. It's just really exciting and it's a different way to connect. There's the boomerang feature on, on Instagram stories. Yeah, I love that one. Yes, that's so fun. You can just, I feel like you can show more personality and more brand power in stories than you can even on the normal feed. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And where do you think it's going to go, Tracy? Like where's Instagram going to take us over the next year? What else are they going to do? Oh, well, I'm not sure if you know, but just, you know, a couple of weeks ago, well, actually months ago now, they introduced Instagram Live as well. So it's Mm -hmm. similar to Facebook Live. So you can do that and you can, you know, tell your followers, I'm going to be doing an Instagram Live at this time and I'm going to be talking about this. Come and join me and I'm going to answer your questions or um, come and join me and I'm going to give you a sneak peek of this or whatever or even discounts. Like if you come to the Instagram Live, there's going to be an exclusive giveaway opportunity or uh, an, an incentive for people who come to the live or whatever. Um, so I think you can use that really, really creatively. Um, that's the same thing with the Instagram stories. If I can just touch on that very quickly again, you can hint in your stories for people to go and read your latest Instagram posts. So you can kind of send, um, because there are other Instagram users that interact with stories pretty much only. And then there are other Instagram users that interact with the feed, um, the traditional feed. So you can kind of play them off each other um, and send one to the other so that they're kind of engaging with both of your staff. Um, that's a really nifty trick to do that. But so, yes, there's Instagram Live. But I feel like um, Instagram almost wants to take on Pinterest a little bit. 
Clint, because now you can save posts and you can also save them under collections, like pinning your favourite posts that you see. You can actually save those and then you can order them into collections or like little pin boards or folders. So I actually have um, several collections happening at the moment where I'm saving funny memes or I'm saving gift ideas or I'm saving smoothie recipes, I'm saving... um, Oh, oh my gosh, like things I want to bake. Like I'm just, I've got all these different categories and things that I'm saving and which is pretty much going to make Pinterest irrelevant for me pretty soon, I can imagine. So maybe Instagram just wants to take over every social media platform. They've <laughs> they've done it with Snapchat yeah. and now they're trying to do it to Pinterest. They've yeah, taken it. Facebook Live. Periscope yeah. is no longer, um, Yeah. Who awesome. knows? They're dominating. That's their no, plan. They, they, they are. And guys, studio owners that are listening, you, you, you've got to be there. Um, Tracy, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, so much value, so much gold when it comes to, you know, getting up on Instagram and what to do once we're there. Uh, I know you mentioned that you've got a, a course launching soon about Instagram. So tell us a, a little bit about where our studio owners can go to find out more about you. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So, um, you know, what you can actually do is head to mumswithhustle.com and everything is going to be there. But um, my Instagram course is called hashtag hustle. So in there, it's just, it's incredible. The transformation that I've seen within our students is yeah, it's phenomenal. It makes me it makes me very excited because having a small business, it's like having a baby. Um, you love it so much, and you just want to see it thrive. And this course is really about empowering people to kind of either do run their own Instagram game or at least have such a solid foundation of knowledge and understanding when it comes to the platform so that if they do decide later down the track to outsource Instagram or their social media, they can at least have those strategic conversations with a freelancer or with a social media manager so that, you know, they're not being taken advantage of. Like Mm. it's important to know your stuff before you outsource anything. So this course is really going to deep dive into that. Um, But, you know, it's also really business savvy. It's not just about social media. It's about really understanding your customer avatar or your ideal audience, really knowing your niche deeply, coming up with an Instagram concept um, for some curated content. Um, There are incredible bonuses that come along with it that will help you with caption writing as well. Um, So, yeah, it's pretty, it's very comprehensive. And, of course, you're going to leave with a killer hashtag strategy to let you to let your ideal audience know that you exist. But it's all there at mumswithhustle.com and I'm running a free Instagram challenge at the moment as well, which you can find at instachallenge.co and that's for free. It's five days and then after that we'll open up the paid course, hashtag hustle. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, um, Tracy. Like I said, really great to speak with you and we look forward to following you and getting more updates on what's happening with Instagram. Yes. Well, I hope people come and follow me on Instagram because I'm always giving Instagram tips. I'm just at Mums with Hustle on Instagram. So come Mums and find me. Mums with Hustle. Mums yeah. with a U, not an O. Yes, for, Mums uh, with a U. <laughs> for our listeners <laughs> uh, in uh, the US and Canada. Okay. Thanks so much, um, Tracy. Yeah. Talk to you again really soon. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. For all the resource links from the show and to receive access to our free dance studio growth training, make sure you visit transformmydancestudio.com.